right, for this video, we're going to be going over some of the practice rhythm strips in chapter three of the ECG Made Easy book, um, sixth edition. And this is over sinus mechanisms. We won't be covering all the strips um, just for some time uh, reasons. So looking at the first practice strip, uh, number 26 or figure 3.8, first thing we wanna look at is the regularity. So looking at this rhythm, it looks to be pretty regular. Now we can always uh, use this little method here. And you can see that my QRS complexes appear pretty regularly. To figure out rate, we're going to use the small block technique. So I have sectioned off a two QRS complexes. I chose these two because they seem to line up uh, with the blocks pretty well so I don't have to split any blocks, and I just counted the number of blocks between. Um, every large box is five, so I just did five, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And then I just take a calculator since we're using the 1500 method, do 1500 divided by 26, it gives us 57.6, so I just rounded that answer to 58. So I have a regular rhythm that's 58 beats per minute. Next thing I want to look at is my P waves. So my P waves are these small waves that appear before the QRS complex. It represents the depolarization of the atria. I want to make sure I have one P wave for every QRS complex, which it appears that I do. And I want to make sure that they're all upright, and they are all upright, meaning they have a positive deflection, and that they all look pretty much the same. And they do here, maybe some slight differences, um, but not enough to make, a, make it a wandering pacemaker. So I just wrote that they're uniform, they're upright, and this one-to-one -one, um, just means that I have one P wave for every QRS complex. So that would be my conduction ratio. Next thing we'll look at our, is our PR interval. We know with sinus mechanisms, uh, we want our PR interval to be anywhere between 0 0.12 to 0 0.2, and that's normal. So I tried to find a P wave in a QRS complex, and I chose right here that lined pretty well up with the boxes, and you can choose any uh, P wave in QRS complex that you would like. But I just marked where the P wave started to the point where the QRS complex started. So it's where the P wave starts all the way to where the QRS complex starts. I drew a line down from each complex and it ended up with four across. So four small boxes is equal to 0 0.16 seconds because we know that one little box is 0 0.04. Next thing I want to look at is the QRS duration for sinus mechanisms. We want that to be a normal narrow QRS, represents the depolarization of the ventricles, and that could be anywhere from 0 0.04 up to 0 0.12. We really don't want it to go over 0 0.12. Typically, they're just one or two small boxes. I chose right here, uh, really it's about one and a half boxes, so I just kind of rounded it up to two boxes. Uh, to measure that and got 0 0.08 seconds. You'll see in the uh, ECG Made Easy book they want you to measure the QT interval, but from here on out I would rather look at the ST segment. So I've crossed out QT interval and I've wrote ST with a line over um, representing ST segment. And the reason I want to do this is because we don't want to forget to mark if the ST segment is elevated or depressed or if it's normal. Um, just glancing at this rhythm, you can see that my ST segment uh, looks pretty high here, so it is elevated. If you're unsure how to measure that, we want to find the J point. And the J point is where the QRS complex ends, and the um, pathway to the T wave begins. Now it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to pick a complex where it's pretty noticeable. Uh, right here, you can see this J point. And this is where that QRS waveform is ending and where this ST segment is beginning. 
And we'll see on the next one what a normal one looks like, but we can see up here, this is where there's kind of this notch where the J point begins. And instead of being down here at the isoelectric line, we get this upwards deflection of our T wave. Another little trick that you can use is you can place your paper along the isoelectric line and we can look at that ST segment, so where the QRS ends to where the T wave is. And we can see that it starts off more than two blocks above the isoelectric line. So if you place your paper across and you can see a few blocks between here and here, then we definitely have some elevation. So the name of this first rhythm is going to be sinus bradycardia at 58 beats per minute. It's bradycardic because we're under 60. It is sinus because we, it is regular. We have P waves for every QRS complex. They're upright, they're uniform. And then I put with, the C with a dash over it means with, ST segment elevation. Uh, sometimes we also see it written like this. ST segment elevation. So whichever abbreviation you wanna use is fine. Moving on to the second rhythm, so this is number 27, figure 3.9. Um, we can see right off the bat that this rhythm is kind of irregular. Now we typically always want to look at lead two when we're measuring things. So that would be the top line and I'm just marching off my QRS complexes and you can see it's almost regular here but then it really just starts to become irregular. So when you have an irregular rate, um, you can do two things. I like to put a range uh, when we're first starting off. Um, and what I do is I just count the amount uh, between the smallest to closest QRS complexes and the two widest. And that kind of gives me a range of beats per minute. If you're just using the six second technique, sometimes they'll just count across one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, maybe seven there. So it'd probably be 60 to 70 beats per minute. But here I did a range, so I found, I thought these were the uh, two QRS complexes that were closest. It happened to line right up here with a block, so I got 5, 10, 15, 20, and then one more block, so I have 21. And that's where it gave me my top number, which is 71 beats per minute, so that's as fast as the rhythm's going. And then I head over here, um, where I counted between 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Um, 1500 divided by 31. And that's what gave me my low end, which was 48 beats per minute. <clears throat> Looking at my P waves, they're kind of small here, but I do have a P wave for every QRS complex. They are upright. They all look very similar. And my conduction ratio, of course, one to one. My PR interval, it is kind of hard to see because the P waves are so small, but I measured it here at this complex. So it began right before this boulder line and ended three boxes past that bold line. So I got four boxes in total across four small boxes. <clears throat> Remember each box is 0 0.04 seconds, so four times 0 0.04 gives me that 0 0.16 seconds. My QRS duration, you can see I kind of put it right here, uh, very narrow here, which is what we like to see with sinus rhythms, only one block, so that'd be 0 0.04. Again, we're looking at ST segment, and this ST segment is normal. So remember, we're looking at where the J point begins in relation to the QRS complex and the T wave. So my QRS complex ends here, and that is my J point. And you can see that it begins right across that isoelectric line and then deflects upwards into the T wave. So that is a normal ST segment. Because it is irregular, it is sinus, because we have P waves for every QRS complex, everything measures within normal limits. So I have a sinus arrhythmia at 48 to 71 beats per minute. And I don't have to put anything about the ST segment because it's normal.
Moving on to the last rhythm on this page, number 28, or figure 3.1. First thing we're looking at, is it regular or irregular? As you can see, it marches out, looks to be very regular. We can always double check and see that my QRSs match up with those dashes, so it is a regular rhythm. My rate, we're gonna count the small boxes. I chose these two complexes. Again, you can choose any two complexes you want. I just try to find one that matches up with some lines. And I counted 23 small boxes across. Five, 10, 15, uh, 20, 21, 22, 23. And that is where I got the rate of 65 beats per minute. So we always round to a whole number for those. Looking at my P waves, they are all upright. And I'll highlight the P waves here. They're all upright, they all look the same. And I have a one to one conduction ratio, meaning one P wave for every QRS complex. My PR interval, I measured at 0.2 seconds, which would be about five blocks. So let me find one that lines up with a block here. Looks like this one does. So this is where my QRS complex begins, and this is where my P wave begins. And then I'm just counting the blocks in between. So one, two, three, four, five. 5 times 0 0.04, and that's where I got the 0.2 seconds from. Next, we want to look at QRS duration, and I have 0 0.12. So I'm going to pick a QRS complex here. This complex ends about here. I always go to the nearest line. I don't really do half blocks. You can do half blocks. And it begins about right on that line. So that gives me three blocks across. <clears throat> Which gives me the 0 0.12 seconds. And this is what I'm looking at here is my QRS complex. Is that complex right there highlighted in red. Next, I want to look at the ST segment. So I want to find my J point. And here we can see the J point pretty clearly. So this is my QRS. This is where my QRS complex ends. That is my J point. And this is the segment up to the T wave. So ST segment is from the S wave to the T wave. Now, when I'm looking at my isoelectric line, kind of line it up with where my P waves come up from an end, we can see this huge area that dips below for my ST segment. So we're actually about one, two, three, four, five, four to five blocks below the isoelectric line. Any deviation of two small blocks we consider elevation or depression so we definitely have ST segment depression here. So my name for this rhythm would be sinus rhythm. Uh, I don't call it a normal sinus rhythm just because it's not completely normal there is some ST segment depression. Uh, so just a sinus rhythm at 60 beats per minute because it's within or sorry 65 beats per minute uh, because it is within that normal heart rate with ST segment depression. All right, moving on to the next page of chapter three. Uh, we'll be looking at number 29, figure 3.11. First thing we wanna do, look at our regularity. This one appears to march out pretty regularly. You can always double check.
So you can see March is out pretty regular. My rate, I'm going to find two R waves to count in between. And for uh, this one, I got 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 small boxes across. You can see I labeled it right there. So we do 1,500 divided by 14. I get 107 for my rate. My P waves, which are right here, they look a lot like the T waves because this rate is a little faster, so they're a little closer together. I do have P waves that appear before every QRS complex. They are all upright and they all pretty much look about the same. So one to one for my conduction ratio because I do have one P wave for every QRS complex. My PR interval, I measured here, so it's where the P wave begins to where the QRS complex begins. I measured three boxes across. Each box is 0 0.04, so that gives me a total of 0 0.12 seconds. My QRS duration I measured here, it's about one and a half close to two boxes, so I just rounded up to two boxes, so that'd be 0 0.08. And next, looking at my ST segment. So, where my QRS ends, which is right here, up to where my T wave is. And this ST uh, segment depression is not as obvious as the last one. It's more subtle. If I put my paper along the isoelectric line, then I can see that that does dip down about two boxes. So it's right on the line of two boxes. So for number 29, we would have sinus tachycardia because the rate is over 100 beats per minute. Um, I just rounded up to 110 beats per minute. I was probably doing the uh, six second technique here uh, with ST segment depression. All right, moving on to number 30. First thing we wanna look at is regularity. So this does look regular. We don't have a whole lot of complexes to count, but it is regular. For my rate, I'm going to count between two R's, all the small boxes. So I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So that's where I get 44 beats per minute. My P waves are right here. They are all upright, they are all uniform, and I have a one-to-one -one conduction ratio, meaning I have one P wave for every QRS complex. My PR interval, I measured at 0 0.16, so where this P wave began to where this QRS complex began, I had four small boxes across. So we do that 0 0.04 times four, gives us 0 0.16. My QRS duration, I measured it here, so where the QRS begins to where the QRS ends, and I only got one box, that's just 0 0.04. And then looking at my ST segment, you see this is where my QRS ends, which would be my J point, to where my T wave is. So this would be my ST segment, and it you can see it starts below the isoelectric line. And again, we can confirm that by kind of, we can definitely lay our paper across this isoelectric line. It's very easy to see. Here's the slow rate. And we can see this area from where QRS complex ends up to the T wave it is all below that line. So it's about three to four boxes below the isoelectric line. So that would be ST segment depression. So my interpretation is sinus bradycardia, bradycardia because the rate is below 60 beats per minute at 40 beats per minute with ST segment depression. All right, moving down to number 31, figure 3.13. We wanna look at regularity and this one, it would be irregular. So we can definitely see here, we have a huge block of time. 
uh, where nothing is happening here. Now when I do conduct beats, it looks to be uh, pretty close to regular. So that's why I just put regular when conducting. For your rate, you will not be able to use the six second technique on this one because we have beats that are missing. So we want to count the rate when we do have a conducting beat. Um, so I counted 19 blocks here, which would be 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And that's what gave me the rate of 79, so 78.9. We just round to the whole number. For my P waves, they are upright. They are uniform. They do come before every QRS complex when I do have a QRS complex. My PR interval, I measured over here because I found one that lined up with some lines very well. Now, this one's really about four to five blocks. You're, you know, we give some leeway on a block or two, so I just put four, which gives me 0 0.16 seconds. My QRS duration is only uh, two blocks maybe even just one and a half. So here it lines up pretty well. You can see the two blocks. And then I wanna look at my ST segment. Now it kind of throws you off because our T waves here do look really tall and pointy. Um, but if we look at the actual J point where the QRS ends, it ends right here, which is right on the isoelectric line, and then it goes up into the T wave. So this is usually actually called by, uh, caused by an electrolyte balance called potassium. But the ST segment is normal. So what is this long period here where we don't have any conducting beats? That would be a sinus arrest. So for whatever reason, my sinus mechanisms fail. Um, and they just decide to take a break and we call that a sinus arrest. It could uh, happen for just a fraction of a second for up to multiple seconds. I've seen them, you know, last for almost a whole minute long. So it just, it's a very weird thing that happens, but it almost looks like they're in a systole during that time where nothing is happening. And eventually the SA node will kick back in and go, oh my gosh, I'm not conducting. I need to start conducting again. And it'll start conducting beats again. So this is sinus rhythm at 78 per, or sorry, 79 beats per minute with a sinus arrest. It's not a sinus block. A sinus block is when we just drop one beat. So the way to measure that is measure that there would be a beat here, but we could still measure and my QRS complex would pick up again right back here. That would be a dropped beat. It would still go in rhythm, we're just missing one complex. Anything longer than one dropped beat, we consider a sinus arrest. All right, on this next page, I skipped uh, number 32 because it had a wide QRS, and so it doesn't really fit in with that sinus mechanisms, and we're only focusing on sinus mechanisms for right now. So moving on to number 33, or figure 3.15. Again, we're looking at regularity. Seems to march out, very regular. My rate, we're gonna count the small boxes between 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I got 19 small boxes. It gives me 78.9, so we just round up to 79. My P waves, which are here, are all uniform. They're all upright. We have one P wave for every QRS complex, so I have a one to one conduction ratio. My PR interval. I measured it right here, but I can show you on a different rhythm how we would measure that. Let me find one that lines up very well. This one lines up well. Right where that P wave begins to where the QRS complex begins, and I have three boxes across. Each box is 0 0.04 seconds, so it gives me 0 0.12 seconds. 
my Cure Restoration on this one. Uh, I put two boxes, it's about one and a half to two boxes, so this one lines up very well. You can see where the QRS complex begins and where it ends, meaning it goes back to the isoelectric line. We have exactly two boxes on that one. And then looking at my ST segment, so my QRS, here's my J point where the complex ends, and then up into the T wave. So the, the ST segment depression on this one's very slight. Um, so if that was missed, it would not be a big deal. It's kind of borderline on whether that's really uh, depression or not. So number 33 would be a sinus rhythm at 79 beats per minute with ST segment depression. Uh, if you did not count that depression, then it would just be a normal sinus rhythm at 79 beats per minute. Figure 3.16 is a little tougher. When you glance at it, it looks very regular. Um, so I actually went and I counted out all the boxes between the RR complexes here. And it, they all vary just by one or two boxes. So I think this one um, would almost just be regular sinus tack because I don't think it varies by more than 10% in rate or it's just right at that 10%. Um, but we're gonna go with a regular because it's what the uh, book classified it as. For the rate, I just took the average, which was 14. It's the one that appeared most. Now you should do the shortest and the longest, um, but this one is just so close, I felt I could just do the average, which is 14, and it gave me a rate of 107. All of my P waves, are right here. They are all uniform. They are all upright. They appear before every QRS complex. My PR interval, which I measured here, is four boxes across, so I got 0 0.16 seconds. My QRS duration um, is about one and a half blocks, so I rounded up uh, to 0 0.08, but you could also put 0 0.04 because this one is just perfectly one and a half blocks. And then my ST segment here is normal. So looking at this one here, I have my QRS. You can see this is where the complex ends. And then it goes up into my T wave, so it's right on the isoelectric line. So the label for this rhythm would be sinus arrhythmia at 107 beats per minute. We are going to move on down to number 36, figure 3.8. Looking at this rhythm, regular or irregular, it looks very regular. Now you can see my isoelectric line does kind of go up and move a little bit and that's pretty normal on a real ECG because that line will vary when a patient breathes. My rate, I counted 17 small blocks between the R and R interval. gives me a rate of 88 beats per minute. All of my P waves are upright and uniform. And I have one P wave for every QRS complex, which gives me a one-to-one -one ratio. My PR interval, I measured right here, where this P wave begins, where the QRS complex begins, and it gave me four blocks. So I got 0 0.16 seconds, which falls within normal range. My QRS duration here is just one block across. So that would be 0 0.04. And then my ST segment here is very normal. So here's my QRS, my J point where the QRS complex ends, and then it goes up into the um, T wave. And as you can see, when I put my paper across, it does go back to the isoelectric line and then reflect upwards. So it's within normal range, be normal sinus rhythm at 88 beats per minute. Moving down to number 37. This rhythm already right away looks kind of goofy because we have that huge ST segment elevation, but it is pretty regular, marches out regularly. My rate, I counted between 
the RR interval here, and I know the T wave, sometimes it's difficult to see that T wave is definitely dipping above that R. But we want to make sure we're counting from the QRS to the QRS, and I got 16 blocks across. Which gave me 93.7, so we rounded up to 94 beats per minute. My P waves are here. They are notched, which can happen sometimes, but they are all upright, they're uniform, and we have one P wave for every QRS complex. My PR interval, I measured over here, so we hit the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS, and it was four blocks across, which is normal. QRS duration is a little more difficult to see on this rhythm. I actually went down here to lead three just because I could see it a little more clearer. So this is where that QRS complex begins, and this is actually where the QRS complex is ending. Um, it is hard to see because you have that massive ST elevation. So I will highlight some QRS complexes in red. So this is that QRS complex. Now we definitely have some ST elevation here. It's pretty easy to see. Um, this is where my QRS complex ends. Obviously we are way above the isoelectric line here, um, even more so on lead three. About one, two, three, four, five, six blocks above the isoelectric line. So it's definitely ST elevation. Remember, sometimes we see in it uh, written like STE. So for my interpretation, I put a sinus rhythm. I did not call it a normal sinus rhythm just because it's not completely normal because we do have that ST segment elevation. So sinus rhythm at 94 beats per minute with ST segment elevation. Now we're looking at number 38, which is figure 3.2, regular or irregular. It's definitely irregular, so I did a um, range on this one. Or you could just use the six second technique, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 90 beats per minute. Um, I just took what I thought was possibly the smallest gap and the largest gap. I got 15 blocks in one, 20 in the other, and uh, made a range there. Looking at all my P waves, they are there. They're all upright. They all look pretty much the same and we have one P wave for every QRS complex. So I have a one to one conduction. My PR interval, I found a P wave over here that matched up pretty closely with a line. And I got four blocks across, which is pretty normal, 0 0.16 seconds. My QRS duration, it's very narrow here, so you can see I marked one off here. It is one box, maybe one and a half, um, but so I put 0 0.04. And then my ST segment, so this is where my QRS ends. It ends right on that isoelectric line and then deflects up into the T wave that is normal. So my interpretation of this rhythm is sinus arrhythmia because it is irregular, but it is sinus in nature at 75 to 100 beats per minute, or we could put sinus arrhythmia at 90 beats per minute. Moving on to number 39. Regular or irregular? This is regular. Even though it looks like some of my QRS complexes are larger than others, that is just, um, showing the voltage. But as you can see, when I mark them off, they're very regular. My rate, I counted from one point to the other point. Make sure with these notched QRSs, you are counting from the same point on each QRS. So I chose this larger point, so it was just easier to recognize. 
and I got 16 blocks across, which is what gave me my 94 beats per minute. My P waves are there. I have one P wave for every QRS complex. They're all upright and they're all uniform. I forgot to put my conduction ratio there. My PR interval I measured here. So this is the beginning of one P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex and I got four blocks across. QRS duration here, this one is on the higher side in normal. So this is my QRS. It is notched up there. And we'll talk about bundle branch blocks later, but that is what it's representing. So it is three blocks across. And that gives me 0 0.12 seconds. So it is normal. It's definitely on the higher side of our range, but we do consider that normal. Next, I want to look at my ST segment. So where my QRS ends, we definitely have depression here. It ends all the way down here. And my isoelectric line is up here. So this would be ST segment depression. So here I have a sinus rhythm at 94 beats per minute with ST segment depression. Moving on to number 40, figure 3.22. Regular or irregular, just glancing at it, we can see that it is irregular. Looks like it starts off slower and maybe speeds up a little bit. I did a range here. You could just one, two, three, four, five. We could call it 50 beats per minute. Um, but I took what I, I actually measured out all of them, and so I did the longest interval and the shortest interval and came up with 45 to 55 beats per minute. I do have P waves. They are all upright. They are all uniform, and I have one P wave for every QRS complex. My PR interval, right where P wave begins, where the QRS begins, I have five small boxes. 0 0.04 times 5 gives me 0 0.2 seconds. My QRS duration, this one is about one and a half, two blocks. Um, so I rounded up to two. And that's where I got 0 0.08 seconds there. And then looking at my ST segment, so we have a QRS here. This is where my QRS complex ends, and then it goes up into the T wave, and it's right at that isoelectric line, maybe one block below it, but we have to have it at least be two blocks to consider it anything. So I just put normal. So this is a sinus arrhythmia. I put in parentheses Brady here because I think it is important to note that it is bradycardic. Um, sometimes we'll see this labeled as sinus Brady arrhythmia. Uh, but it is sinus arrhythmia at 45 to 55 beats per minute. Just want to look at a few more examples here. So looking at number 45, we figure 3.27. Regular, irregular. This one seems to march out pretty regular. My sheet is starting to get uh, filled up with dashes here, but we can see that it marches out regularly. For my rate, they got 94 um, beats per minute because I counted 16 small boxes, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, sorry, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that gives me 94 beats per minute. I do have P waves, they are here. They are small, but they are there. They are all uniform, they are all upright, and I have one P wave for every QRS complex. 
my PR interval I measured here. So this, this beginning of this P wave matched pretty close to that thicker bold line. And then this beginning of the QRS, I got three blocks across, which gave me 0 0.12 seconds. My QRS complexes are a little different here, especially because we have some ST elevation. So start here, ends here, and it gave me two blocks across. And now looking at the ST segment. So this is my QRS. Remember all of our QRSs look different. Sometimes we only have a Q and an R, or just a Q and an S, or we may have where it looks very normal. This one ends right here, so my J point would be up here, and then it goes into the T wave. So when I put my paper along that isoelectric line and I look at where my P waves come from and end to match up that isoelectric line, you can see I definitely have all this elevation here between where that QRS ends in relation to that isoelectric line. So that is about two, three blocks of ST elevation. So this one's called a sinus rhythm. It's not a normal sinus rhythm because we do have ST elevation, which does vary it from normal. So sinus rhythm at 94 beats per minute with ST elevation. I just want to look at these last three and then we'll be done with this chapter. So I'm looking at number 50 or figure 3.32, regular or irregular looks to be very regular. My rate, I counted 32 uh, boxes, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 1, 2, so 32. And that gave me 46.8, which we round up to 47 beats per minute. I do have P waves. They are all upright. They are all uniform. They all have one P wave for every QRS complex. I have a one to one conduction ratio. My PR interval, where a P wave begins and the QRS begins, I have four boxes across. That gives me 0 0.16 seconds. My QRS duration here is about one and a half boxes, so I rounded up to two, which gives me 0 0.08. That's just we take the 0 0.04 times two boxes because it's 0 0.08. And my ST segment here looks very normal. So this is my QRS. This is where my J point, where my QRS complex ends. It's right on that isoelectric line, so there's no variation there at all. So this rhythm would be titled sinus bradycardia at 47 beats per minute. Number 51, or figure 3.33. We have a regular rhythm, marches out regularly. My rate, I counted 13 boxes between, and these QRS complexes are very high voltage, they go right up to the top here. So 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. That gave me a rate of 115 beats per minute. My P waves, now because this uh, rhythm is so fast, these P waves run right into the T waves, or T waves actually run right into the P waves. Um, but I do have a P wave for every QRS complex. They are all upright and they all look uniform. My PR interval, I counted here. So this is where the P wave begins and where the QRS complex begins. And it's five boxes across, so it would be, um, 0 0.2, if you take 5 times 0 0.04, be 0 0.2. My QRS dur duration is a little difficult to measure on this because of the large complexes. So looking at this complex right here, my QRS complex begins here. So I marked that line down to the bottom, and it ends right here. That's our J point. And I got three boxes across which would put us right at our high end of normal there at 0 0.12 seconds. 
Now my ST segment, looking at the same QRS complex, remember we, we said it ended right there, and then it goes up into the T wave, so we can definitely see some depression there. And I'll mark it on a different complex that's not as marked up. So here's my QRS, my J point, where my QRS complex ends. We can see that is well below the isoelectric line, and then it goes up into the T wave. So it's definitely some depression there, at least four or five blocks. Because of the rate, it'll be sinus tachycardia at 113 beats per minute with that ST segment depression. Another way to check for our ST segment depression is by using our paper, putting it along the isoelectric line, which is where the P waves begin match that up and we can just see all this area from where the QRS complex ends to where that T wave begins is all below the isoelectric line so that gives us depression. All right last one for sinus mechanisms I'm looking at number 52 figure 3.34. I can see right off the bat that it's irregular it looks like it starts off a little faster then slows down then starts to maybe start speeding up again. So I did a range for this one. I took my shortest interval and my longest interval, and they got 52 to 94 beats per minute. You could do the six second, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So about 70 beats per minute. I do have P waves. They're all upright. They all look very similar. I have one P wave for every QRS complex. So that's my conduction ratio. My PR interval I measured here, so the beginning of this P wave to the beginning of this QRS complex. It's three blocks across, which gives me 0 0.12 seconds. My QRS duration I measured it here, so the QRS complex ends here, begins here, so it looks like to be exactly two blocks, so it'd be 0 0.08 seconds. And my ST segment appears to be very normal. So I have my QRS, my J point where the QRS complex ends is right on that isoelectric line. And then it goes up into my T wave. So this one would just be labeled a sinus arrhythmia at 52 to 94 beats per minute.